Okay, y'all, in some quick news, okay? Uh, quick news. Some little updates. Y'all tell me what y'all think down below in the comments, okay? Um, so first of all, Candy Burris, okay? The good girl Candy, let it be known on the Grammy red carpet that she will not be returning to Real Housewives of Atlanta. She said they waited too long. There were some issues with the contract, but she is still good with Bravo. She will still be working with Bravo. She did not cut off her nose to spite her face. She kept it cute. And she didn't call anyone racist or cokehead or sue anyone. So she's going to continue to be a part of the Bravo, Bravo family. Um, let's hear what, what, what the old girl Candy Kane had to say. Me that Well, first of all, we already know you're a boss. We know that you, you've had money forever. Even when some of us were struggling and eating government cheese, Candy was eating nicely. <laughs> Okay, I heard that you were one of the few people that has been re-signed to the Housewives of Atlanta. That's what I heard. Now I'm in the streets. Am I right or wrong? Okay, you don't even have to answer because I, well, do you want to answer or can you not answer? Um, I, like because I, you know what, I really didn't think, I didn't really know if I was going to give any, um, sell anybody how I felt about it's a later date but i already said it or before that's my friend down there i'll say it again i decided i'm not coming back this year really why well i mean i've been doing it for 14 years and i have a lot of things that i got going on this year that big announcements to make soon and i just said i wasn't coming back they did already told me that they did ask me to come back but you know obviously you know we when you talk about with negotiations, we didn't necessarily have on the same page. And so I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to take my move, my break. But you've been one of the few on the franchise that's given them so many other shows, too. Yeah. No, we're still going to be working okay. together. we got some other things coming. Okay. So you just I'm still a part of show. I'm still part of the Bravo family. Okay. I still love them. They love me. But I decided that it was time. So basically that means next season she's going to get a bigger bag and she'll come back. All right. Let me no, it's not even that because, you know, they, it's, they've they always given me a big bag. You know, it's not even that just that. But, like, literally, it was only, like, one thing that we didn't necessarily agree upon. You know what I mean? But at the same time, a friend of mine had asked me one day. They were like, okay, well, why do you keep doing it? And I was like, it's, well, you know, you're doing something for 14 years. You know, you kind of just do it. They did ask. Child, this is the only way. That Jason Lee was going to get a chance to interview Candy. <laughs> it's on the Grammy Because you've been doing it for 14 years. Well, not only years. that, you've also successfully used reality TV as a platform. And you see he had to play it cute, right? Mm -hmm. I think you, more than a lot of people, understand that it's a marketing tool. Yeah, right? no, for sure, for sure. Music, products, all that. For sure. I think what happened was when they kind of gave us, like, the little break, to, uh, whatever, while they were trying to make their decision, they let me get too much time on my hands so then i got back in the studio more i've been writing more i got some other projects and stuff that's going to be coming i can't wait to announce the other stuff that i got going on so it's like i'm not a person that's just going to sit around so it just gave they gave me too much time to so realize. basically you just text some devito's unavailable and now you're unavailable <laughs> okay i mean i look i don't even try it wasn't even negative i love them okay. you know what i mean and it was right stop being fucking messy jason stop trying to cause issue between me and bravo like i ain't got another show coming out on a network like i may not want to come back you know season 16 or some shit like that you know it was a cool conversation it wasn't you know, negative. Oh, we know when you throw shade, it is not shady. Candy, you you know, she's teaching me how to read in a nice way. Child. <laughs> okay, look, I ain't gonna lie. Because you've been doing it for 14 years. The shade. The shade of it all. Well, I'll say it's not like I won't be sad not to see Candy on Real Housewives of Atlanta. But I also feel like it is time for our good girl to go. It's time. Okay? Okay. So, also... update with killer mike if you follow me on instagram you saw i posted that killer mike got arrested during the grammys the fuck killer mike was reportedly detained due to an alleged physical altercation with security guard at the grammys i need to know what happened law enforcement sources tell tmz killer mike was detained after allegedly getting into some kind some kind of physical altercation with a security guard at the event we're told he's not under arrest the officers are still trying to sort out exactly what happened but he won three grammys he got escorted out and handcuffed. He's not under arrest. 
what did y'all cuff him for? If he was not under under arrest, there was no need to cuff him. I feel like this was absolutely an embarrassment. I feel like the Grammys behind the scenes wants the niggas to be like, here, take your little award, but we're still going to find a way to embarrass you and show you that you're less than us. Um, that's what it feels like to me, which is why I appreciated Jay-Z. Where, 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 where is the, uh, the rap guy, Jay-Z? I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys... Never won album of the year. That doesn't work. I don't want to embarrass this young. Okay. How does that work exactly? It's like you feel like the album of the year award is the most prestigious award. So you don't want to give that to a black woman. You don't want to give her too many awards. You don't want to award her too much. But we can continue to give Billie Eilish and Taylor Swift all the damn awards every year. Child. It's racial. It is. But at the same time. We live in America and everybody is playing part in the same system. And I think it's unrealistic whenever everybody's like, why you keep going to their table? Build your own table. And it's like people have built their own tables, which is why they can show up to the Grammys when they feel like it, take an award, pour champagne in it and then leave right after. Like, that's why they can do that, because they did build their own table, because they do do their own thing and they do have their own influence that doesn't really need anybody else's outside influence in order to be impactful. Um, so shout out to Jay-Z. I'm glad he felt the need to defend Beyonce because y'all know how y'all act. Y'all can't stand when black men defend their black wives. Y'all can't stand when men come to the defense of their women. Y'all can't stand that. Um, and also y'all, Jess Hilarious, okay? <laughs> Jess Hilarious has finally inked her deal. Um, apparently there was some contract issues before, but now Jess Hilarious is officially a member of the Breakfast Club. I'm happy for her. <laughs> Okay, she may be she may be male identified. I may not always agree with everything she has to say, but as y'all have seen, I don't need to agree with everything somebody has to say in order for them to win and me to want them to win. Um, you know what I'm saying? We all come to our conclusions in our own time. At the end of the day, I am a woman that is for women. You know what I'm saying? Case by case basis. But at the end of the day, I feel like just hilarious is funny. I think she has real talent and I think she deserves to win. So I'm happy that she got the spot. Let's hear what she had to say. Interesting. Uh, it was interesting that when I first had um, announced, right, like everybody who was like all for me, right? And then, you know, to hear everybody running their mouth, like it was the same people that was like, oh, you know, all for me. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really liked like how um, it was rolled out. I liked how because, you know, to hear people not apologize, I don't really need no apologies, but to hear people who, to be like, the, just to hear silence now, mm -hmm. it's just so far. I'd rather That's you right. shut up than for yeah. you to not say sorry, because, you know, you don't be sorry about it. And I love that Gary Owen, he said he was going to say something, but he didn't. I'm glad he didn't I'm either. He shut up. Yeah, you know, I, re I got something to host for everybody. Damn so it, as I'm glad that he didn't, you know. And then I need for y'all to know, I call these niggas trash all the time. This is how I talk is, to them. That is a fact. <laughs> so, that that, fact. so that was, that was, I'm going to be calling y'all trash all the time when y'all have trash opinions. She you called, know what I'm she saying? She called me trash, old. All, All the, the time. time. This is how, how she I talk. talk That's to her love them. language. And she tells me shut up. She told me shut up so many times. They were like, she told Envy to shut up. She she burned out her bridges. She tells like, me to shut up all the time, guys. I don't I, know if you listen. All the time. By the so. way, that's a Baltimore thing. Y'all call y'all grandma's dummies. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know yeah. 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 I make sure I'm far away from mine. But yeah, I kind of like, come on, dummy. And she <laughs> said the same thing. Like, but it's it, it's all it's it's all cultural for Baltimore. That, that's, right. that's just how we are. So I love my brothers, though. I love the fact that I'm up here finally, though. So no, we love that you are here. Thank you. That's right. I just don't know how long these outfits going to last. <laughs> I told you six weeks. I give it we, six weeks. Yeah, then, then you start see. seeing sweats. I ain't going to lie. I don't, I don't know, but I'm still going to be coming in here looking fly. Like, don't play with me. I'm not going to come in here looking like y'all. <laughs> like, no, because I don't know why you got a scully on. Like, yeah, that means you ain't shaved that little bit of fuzz coming out. No, I, I got a haircut two days ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. cool. sometimes you look like you care, sometimes you don't. You got <laughs> with slippers on. They said, I've been doing, we've been doing this for 13 years, so we don't care. <laughs> I'm here for it, y'all. I'm I'm definitely here for it. I think Justice hilarious. I always have. And I'm I'm happy for her. So yeah. Haters be damned. Okay. I want the girls to win. 
All right, y'all. So let's get into the topics that I had saved before we got to, you know, the Grammys and everything. We will discuss that further on Ooh Lady's first panel, which will be on my channel this week. Don't front nothing. We're going to look at the looks and everything. All right. <laughs> Listen. Okay. To me, I'm sorry. Like, I feel like Angela Yee probably has incredible, like, business savvy. I think that she is really good with hobnobbing with other celebrities and, and all of those things. Um, and I think she's right at picking the right people to be in business with, like, all of that. But to me, Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club kind of is reminiscent of when someone gets on because of how they look. Not because of their opinion, not because they're memorable, not because they provide you with anything of real substance in the space. Um, and I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, when I look at patriarchy, we do hold women to a higher esteem than men. So if DJ Envy can get up there and not really be a DJ, because at the end of the day, you don't pick the songs, the network picks the songs. Like there's somebody above you that's picking what songs are being played, in my opinion. And so you getting up here is really mostly about personality. And I don't feel like DJ Envy really has one. I think Charlemagne is the one that actually sticks out as an individual and kind of as the star to me. Um, So adding, adding just hilarious is so much better because she's actually talented. She's actually funny. She'll bring something to the table besides just looks. And I feel like that was all Angela really brought to the table was her looks and her, her contacts. I'll give her that, her contacts, okay? The people who, in the industry who she's friends with and who she's cool with, who she knows, who she could have come down and all of that type of shit. Um, but anyway, let's get into these other topics. I have other things to talk to y'all about. Let's get into it. I had a lot of conversation about the disadvantages of being attractive. One, as a woman, you will have a hard ass time making friends. I've met people who gravitate towards me because I'm attractive because they think in proximity, they will get some of my privileges. I had friends that cut me off out of the blue for literally no reason. I have friends that have told me to humble myself. It's going to be hard to date. I've met men who just want to be with me to be a trophy. I've had boyfriends who have not been able to deal with the amount of attention I get and therefore take it out on me. I've been stalked. I've been followed home. I've been stalked by ex-boyfriends. I've been groped. I've been graped. I've been assaulted. I've been through a lot because I'm attracted. It's not for the weak. And when people talk about pretty privilege, yes, I will get a free meal. I will get free entry. I will get preferential treatment. A lot of times I don't have to pay for stuff. That's great. But I wouldn't say it's comparable to the amount of detriments being attractive has put me in. Lord knows I'm very grateful that my mother picked an attractive sperm donor that gave me this face, but it has definitely made life a bit more challenging. When you are an attractive person, especially an attractive woman, you will need to walk around and protect yourself physically, mentally, everly from everyone because they will be attracted to you they will be coming for different reasons and you're going to have to be able to keep them away. As a woman who's attractive, you need to learn how to defend yourself. I'm in the gym five times a week getting strong as fuck in case somebody walks up on me, they don't get you. You need to learn how to read people. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. You need to not get gas late at night. You need to be on your P's and Q's and you need to be extremely intelligent. I once had someone pretend to be a business, sent me an email saying that they would fly me and my brand, I have a swimsuit line, to another country to do a photo shoot. Everything seemed extremely legitimate. They even sent photos of other women that will be attending the event. They fucked up because one of the women in the photos is someone I know. I messaged them, they had no idea what I was talking about. This pervert was trying to lure me out to another country to do God knows what with me. This is what you get for being attractive. I appreciated her message because I think it was 100% true. I think there is pretty privilege, as I just said with Angela Yee, but I also feel like there's a negative side of that, like with everything. Everything is a catch-22. Everything has positives. It has negatives. And I feel like she pointed out all of the negatives, and I feel like the fact that she was deep enough and reflective enough to be able to see it for what it is 
makes her all the more beautiful because to me is nothing worse than a beautiful woman that doesn't know what's actually happening around her to be ignorant to how you're being perceived. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I'm as attractive as she is, you know what I'm saying? But I do feel like I'm an attractive woman. I know that my lighter complexion and my curlier um, hair texture and all of those things afford me pretty privilege on some level. And I've also been in spaces where I have to say that I'm not the person you're going to fuck today. I've, I've been in situations where I have to lead with my personality and with who I am as a person and let you know, because if I'm too nice, you're going to take my kindness for weakness and you're going to hit me up and put me in an uncomfortable position. Then you're going to gaslight me and tell me I was tripping and I'm full of myself. That's happened a lot. I've even had male friends not want to compliment me or say anything too nice to me because they don't want me to be full of myself. What? It doesn't even enter my mind not to compliment someone because I don't want them to think too highly of themselves. That's crazy. But that's the way even just my friends will handle me. So I definitely understand what she's saying. And I feel like um, I appreciate the messaging because there is something to be said about women who are attractive and how men will sometimes view them as someone that's easier to take advantage of. Because you automatically assume if somebody is pretty, they've only been getting around in life, succeeding in any way because of their looks. So you underestimate their intelligence level. So, yeah, everybody, you know, not everybody. There were some people that were so upset in the comments talking about she not that cute and all of that shit. But to be honest, I feel like she was absolutely 100 on the money. She was 100 on the money. That's how I feel about it, girl. Let's go ahead and move on. I just thought it was an interesting topic. You know what I'm saying? All right. <clears throat> Lakeith. Y'all know, even though Lakeith um, has babies with black women, I still kind of view him in a Donald Glover kind of, you know, arena. Um, I want to be acceptable and attractive in the black community, but I don't want to actually be in the black community, meaning that I don't want to like, you know, I don't really want to be attached to you niggas in one way or another. Like with Donald Glover, he doesn't want to be attached to the black women. You know, of course, it goes back to him being some nerd with a big head and small shoulders and whatever black girl he like not liking him. So we progress on in life. You know, feeling as though white women are better because you can get more access with white women. You can whiten your line and have biracial children who a lot of people view as more attractive. And then on top of that, you'll have this feeling of always being more attractive than she's expecting because you're black and you get, you know, brownie points for being black with white women. With black women, you don't get brownie points for being black. The swag that a white woman will think you have simply because you're black, a black woman will be able to see how corny you are. So a lot of niggas like, like Donald Glover don't really like black women Lakeith Stansfield is somewhere in in between yes a hotep you know what I'm saying he's somewhere in between the hotep and a Donald Glover but he's still in there somewhere okay um I appreciate his art I think he's extremely talented I also feel like he's problematic. According to Radar Online, a woman named Monica Sawyer filed a lawsuit against the Book of Clarence star and his wife, oh, he did marry her, Kasim, uh, Kazmir Treese. The couple got engaged in late 2022, officially, officially tying the knot during a small private ceremony last July. They share one young child and Lakeith Stansfield has two other children from previous relationships. Reportedly, the lovebirds agreed to pay Sawyer $500 a day to serve as a nanny for their child from October 31st to November 7th, 2023. Sawyer says she immediately got to work after traveling to New York on Halloween to meet the couple at the Greenwich Hotel. Unfortunately for Sawyer, she soon realized that Lakeith Stansfield and Casimir Treese allegedly wanted her to do far more than what should be required from a nanny. She alleged in her lawsuit that because of the additional task, she barely had time to do everyday things for herself, such as eat, sleep, or shower. Allegedly, on November 2nd, Sawyer asked Treese for a one-hour break to make a telemedicine phone call and was met with an unwarranted attitude. Her complaint stated, while Treese did provide the one-hour break, it was met with aggression and attitude when she brought it up. According to Sawyer, she eventually made it known that she was exhausted from all the extra work and requested four hours off each day. 
Each day, the suit continued. However, while on her break, Treese continuously messaged plaintiff requesting access to her room, giving detailed instruction of how to prepare the infant's bottles and requesting that plaintiff bring a prepared bottle to defendant's room. The document also detailed another alleged incident where within 15 minutes of Sawyer's dinner break, she received a text from Stanfield informing her that his wife wanted juice. The alleged I'm sorry, she allegedly had to pause her downtime to call the hotel and have it delivered to their room. Yeah, yeah, this is weird, y'all. This is really, really weird. Because if you can call her, Lakeith, why couldn't you call the hotel and ask them to bring it? That's so weird. But does it like, doesn't it feel like something he would do? Like, and you would get with the woman who feels like she all of a sudden has this entitlement. You're a celebrity. You can hire a person. And now you have like a slave to wait on you hand and foot. It's very weird. It's giving you one a slave and not a nanny. That's what it's giving. I don't know. This is above my tax bracket. But for someone to even complain about such a thing, it could be for clout. I'm not opposed to it being for clout. But I also feel like, Sometimes people are just assholes and they feel entitled to have someone waiting on them hand and foot because people who work in the service industry are a lot of the times viewed as slaves. I know nobody wants to admit it, but the way we train people in the service industry is as if they are a slave, like they're not a human being. For instance, hotels. I've heard of certain hotels where they want the person at the desk to be standing the entire time. There is no reason for a person to be standing the entire time, except for the fact that you want to create the illusion that this person has a servant standing, waiting for them and, you know, to give orders at any given time. I feel like that comes from slavery and white people expecting black people to be servants and slaves and work to their, you know, work as if they don't have any bodily functions, as if they don't have to do anything for themselves, as if they're a robot or some shit. And so I feel like that has definitely kind of seeped this way into how everyone, including black people, handle people in the service industry. So, yeah. An indentured slave at $20 an hour for 24 hours. Wow. So, yeah, y'all, watch out. Watch out for these dudes, man. <clears throat> $500 a day. $500 a day? That's a lot, but I still feel like I, I'm still a human being, and it doesn't matter how much you're paying me. I'm going to need to not be working for you at some point during my day. Like, that's just how it is. Nobody wants to be a slave. OK, um, what the hell is going on with Killer Mike? They not addressing why he was arrested. But today he is getting a kidney. Girl, what? I, oh my God. I had to stay in my whole eight to uh, eight to ten hour shift when I work for the airline. That's why I have tendonitis now. Yeah, I, I feel like it's completely unrealistic and it's fucked up to put those extreme measures on people's bodies so that customers will feel like somebody is waiting on them as if they're in the 50s. And, and you know, there's some black, <laughs> you know, servant in all white with a smile on their face like a fucking robot. Um. So, yeah, this can go either way, but I'm I'm leaning more towards believing the young woman in her lawsuit against Lakeith Stanfield, because doesn't he give weird to y'all? Doesn't he give like asshole weird to y'all? Just saying. All right. So this was a great, um, great topic of conversation this week. Um, Indian Rock Nation cancel this year's Rock Nation brunch. A source tells page six that they won't host the annual pre- uh, I'm sorry, exclusive pre-Grammy party Saturday. Rock Nation has been hosting the annual event since 2011. The brunch returned last year after taking two years hiatus due to COVID-19. It's unclear why the brunch was canceled. A lot of people were saying that it was canceled because of the Clive, Dav Clive Davis pre-Grammy party. But y'all knew that, the, that Clive Davis was having his pre Grammy party. He does it every year, just like y'all do the Rock Nation brunch every year. So I feel like there's another reason that we may not know of. Um, oh, look, an opportunity for everybody to hate on Megan. 
It's so funny. Are they calling Megan a flop even though she just went number one? That's hilarious. Child, it's so many posts with Nicki Minaj fans hating on Megan underneath the post. It's, it's crazy. Like, they posted a picture of her at uh, Clive Davis pre-Glammy, pre, I keep wanting to say pre-Glammy, pre-Grammy party. And the comments were, you know, I mean, it's just terrible. Like, just so many terrible comments about the young lady. It's ridiculous. Okay. Right. Clive has been doing this party since the 80s. All right. I don't know. <sighs> I talked about uh, Killer Mike at the beginning of the live. So, you know, at the beginning of the event. Anyway, y'all, I wonder what's going on over there. Let's get uh, more into Nikki since we're talking about, you know, we're talking about the whole Meg Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj thing that, you know, has continued into this week for whatever reason. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Um, so this was from five days ago, you guys. Nikki was continuing. This is when she was on Joe Button. I didn't cover it, so I wanted to cover it. And there's another clip I'm gonna play after this. So let's just take a listen and I'll get my opinion. I was the person that said I had an issue with the, you know, the comment, but you clear that up. I also want to say that can you address people just going quick and being quick to say that this is some shit you reacting off of being hooked on some shit or some drugs or whatever this other shit I've is. never done co wait. Hold on. I've no now here's the thing cocaine stays in your hair I I'm told my hair my hair is down right now my real hair my real hair gets almost to my asshole so now she's so proud of that because we all know the textures features colorless girls love to have hair down to their assholes I dare anybody actually let's do a dare Let's, I mean, no, let's do it. Let's do a contest and give it and do a giveaway, a, a giveaway to, um, you know, children or whatever, a, a dope charity. Here's the thing, which, what's, what's interesting. Are you going to answer the question? Everyone that I've ever seen, like, speak and say that about me, I know to be true about them. So it's, it's but that's why I said, Joe, it, it's so much that. I understand why people are confused and you simply cannot come. Oh, but let me just make sure I say this. I have never in my life done cocaine. Okay. I swear to Jesus Christ and the saints, right? I've never in my life done cocaine. Ever. I'm going to just tell y'all right now. I don't think it matters because I think there are other drugs to be on. I think there are you know, Percocets. Um, I think there are uppers that are also prescription drugs that you can get, you know, like speed and stuff like that. Um, there are a whole bunch of other drugs that you could be on. Um, but really people I feel like are pointing out that they feel you're under the influence of something. And I feel like even if you're not under the influence of something, the fact that you're acting as if you're under the influence of something says a lot about your mental state. And that means we need to take it even deeper. So, OK, let's take drugs off the table. You're acting irate. You're acting as if you are losing it. You're acting as if you are not in full control of your yourself. And that is an issue. That is a problem. That, 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 that's pretty much it. I put that on my son's life. So I had to have, I had, a, and by the way, I did a test. I could do a test every single day. Let's, but let's. And another thing, whenever somebody wants to prove so badly that they didn't do cocaine, that they offer to take a test, I often feel like they've done cocaine. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I just kind of feel like the fact that you're even offering to take a test to me is trying too hard to prove something that's really irrelevant. <laughs> Like at the end of the day, if I do do cocaine and if I do do drugs and a lot of people do drugs and I'm just saying, y'all, like in real life, a grown ass person is really not going to try that hard to convince anybody that they don't do drugs if they don't really do drugs. So offering to take a test a lot of the times feels like an extra a extra step, which shows guilt to me. But I could be wrong, y'all. I could be wrong. All right, so let me let me go to the next clip. Let me go to the next clip. The link page. Oh, they deleted it. Oh, you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. Let me let me try it again. Cause I feel like I feel like. 
It must have got deleted. And I can't remember what it was because I was saving shit as it was happening. Damn. I forgot what that one was. You know what it was? It was her just on there slurring and talking slow. Somebody must have took it down, girl. They must have took it down. But that's okay because the beat goes on. Okay? The beat goes on. But I think she was just online slurring and talking weird and her fans were worried for her. And I think they've since taken that down. But it did sound like she was on something. Or falling asleep, girl. I don't know. Um, well, dang. Azalea Banks slams Nicki Minaj for mentioning Meg The Stallion's deceased mother. So um, the good girl Azalea Banks had a lot to say. And I will tell y'all that Azalea Banks is one of those people that I like. But, you know, she's also a pick me. She's also a follower. Sometimes she stands out. Sometimes she says something really smart. Sometimes she gives great perspective. And other times I'm like, Azalea, shut the fuck up. This is one of the times where she's doing both. I agree with some of what she said. And some of it I feel like was hate, 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 hate. Um, so, yeah, let's let's continue. It's 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 pretty clear that Nikki's fucked up. Like she's she's like fucked up financially, you know. Um, <laughs> I realized it when she was fucking frying the can of cream corn in the Teflon pan. I was just like, what's in the welfare is happening right now? Girl, when did that happen? <laughs> this is insane. Um, and whatever. I've probably like. <laughs> made some fucking crazy looking shit on here but i'm also not going around trying to like menace other artists and like call them broke and tell them to pay their rent and all that other shit like that like you can tell just by whatever keeps happening with nikki's butt that she's fucked up right now because there's something very it's 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 pretty clear that Nikki's fucked up. Like she's she's like fucked up financially. It looks like you fucked your brother. Or your brother was fucking on you or something. Because I swear that rush to defend your brother and all that money you put up, that was that was panic. You were panicking. Y'all, I don't think that she's like saying that she's poor or something's wrong because she was eating cream corn is because she was like the way she was cooking it in the can in a Teflon pan. It's the way she was doing it. You were panicking and scared that some sort of family secret was going to get out. 110,000 million trillion percent. And y'all her saying that she believes that Nikki's brother you know, may have fucked her. That's terrible. But in all honesty, if we're keeping it a buck, it would explain her unhealthy allegiance to men who rape women. Like it would explain it to Kashi, her husband, no matter whether y'all want to argue that point or not, her brother um, naming the character Roman uh, Zolensky, which is after Roman Polanski. Like, yeah, like... There, she she always seems to befriend or defend or I mean, even a situation when Meg got shot, she came to Tori's defense like you you support men that abuse women. And I feel like it comes from a place of self hate for women and for the feminine. That's why you have to do all of this pump faking with the Barbie and the pink shit. Right. But it's not really truly who you are. Um, I think she's extremely identified male centered. I think that a lot of her ideals and mentalities are problematic and regressive. Um, and she needs to grow up. I do. But again, I'm a millionaire. I'm not a rapper. So who cares what I have to say? You were panicking about a family secret getting out. Like, why is there just so much to do with children and sex and like just children and like criminal shit around you like sis you had a you had a show before they like hit you with a fucking rico like you'd be sending these kids out here to like harass other celebrities and like see it looks like you fucked your brother or your brother was fucking on you or something because i swear that rush to defend your brother and all that money you put up 
So let me read what else was said. <clears throat> um, Banks was entertaining herself, slammed Nikki for some of the lyrics in her Bigfoot song, specifically where she accuses Meg the Stallion of lying on her dead mama. Furthermore, Banks alleges that Nicki Minaj has been acting out because she has personal problems and she's just taking her anger out on everyone else. And a lot of what Azalea was saying is that Nikki wants to be a part of Rock Nation. She wants the protection and the prestige that comes with being with Rock Nation. And at one point she was supposed to sign to them and what, for whatever reason that did not happen. And since then, it seems as if she's been throwing shots at Beyonce through her music, um, probably some towards Jay-Z that we didn't pick up on. Um, because, you know, like, what can you really say about Jay-Z that you can't say about a whole bunch of other rappers? Um, but it does feel like they've been some back and forth. And I discussed it on my live today on Instagram that I didn't realize that Nikki and Beyonce were throwing shots back and forth towards each other. But when you really go and listen to Savage, that's when you understand that Beyonce is throwing slugs towards Nicki Minaj. Now, I don't know when Nicki Minaj did it before. Before she made that comment about, you know, the real ass couldn't save your husband from cheating on you. Like that line was towards Beyonce, but Beyonce said you want to see some real ass, then baby, here's your chance. That line was supposed to be towards Nicki Minaj. So I, I feel like there's no way that Beyonce started this beef. Like there's no way in my mind. I could be wrong, y'all, but I don't feel like Beyonce would be throwing slugs at Nicki Minaj if Nicki Minaj didn't throw slugs at her first or something that happened in private. So to me, I do think that for whatever reason, Nicki wasn't brought on to Rock Nation. She now feels like everybody's out to get her. And I feel like on some level, there are people fucking with her because the shit that happened last night at the Grammy seemed very intentional to put it all over social media on the Grammy's website page that she won the rap song of the year when it was actually Killer Mike's song. Um, I did think that was fucked up. I did think that was them playing with her emotions. I don't know why they felt the need to do that. But I can say I do feel like people have been unfair to Nikki, yes. But I also feel like Nikki's response to the younger rap girls coming up behind her isn't fair either. It's not fair for you to blame those young women because machines want to support them and they don't want to support you. But you create liabilities, Nikki. Like if we really were to discuss it, Nikki has done damage to her body that I think prohibits her from doing videos and performances the way she could, first of all. Second of all, marrying the pedophile who has to, you know, constantly um, register himself as a sex offender that has to let his probation officer know whenever he's going out of the country or the state. So when there are rap dudes who don't want to be around this cat because of whatever reason, they're going to exclude you. So I feel like a lot of Nikki's decisions have made it even harder for people to defend her, for people to be in her corner. You know what I'm saying? Um, because Beyonce has done music with Nicki Minaj. And to me, whenever Beyonce does a song with somebody, that is a clear sign that they like the person. So you can tell that at some point the relationship took a turn. It was cool. Then it took a turn. And I wonder if that has, you know, it might have something to do with Offset and Cardi B or Cardi B because Beyonce likes Cardi B. Beyonce is not going to choose sides in a beef between Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. And Nicki Minaj might expect Beyonce to. That might cause issue between them. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like things have been happening. You weren't really paying attention to. <laughs> OK, um, the Beehive and the Barb should have been fighting as far as I'm concerned. The way y'all go after everybody else that doesn't have as strong of a fan base, both of y'all have strong fan bases and y'all been beefed out on songs for the, for the longest. So I wonder why nobody has really pointed that out and why there haven't been any, you know, attacks from the barbs to the beehive. Like, why hasn't that happened? I wonder. But anyway, um, let's let's press on.